Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried out, Teacher! In a moment, her reality changed forever. Mary had believed that Jesus was dead and that his body had been taken. That was a stark reality, a reality of despair and brokenness, hopelessness, a reality of devastated dreams and false messianic promises. And in her grief and distress, Mary does not recognize Jesus right in front of her. But hearing him call her by name, she is shaken, shaken from one reality and brought into a new one. It turns out that Jesus is not dead and his body has not been taken. No, Jesus is alive and he's speaking to her. He has been resurrected. This reality changes everything. For each of us, perception is reality. And I wonder what your reality is today. Our reality is shaped by experience. It's shaped by our thoughts. It's shaped by our beliefs. Sometimes our perception of reality is right on. And sometimes our perception of reality is way off. Mary awoke that morning in her reality that was dark and full of despair. Little did she know that that wasn't reality for everyone. In fact, there was a whole new reality that she discovered as Jesus spoke her name. But her perception of reality had been despair and hopelessness. And today I'm asking you to question your reality. That is, to question your perception of reality. We all come here with our own perceptions about life and death our own perceptions of Jesus and faith. Those perceptions shape for us whether or not the resurrection means anything. I don't know if the resurrection matters to you, but I can tell you it matters to me. Do you know do you know what the hardest part of my job is for me? It's burying people I love. It's loving people and knowing that I might have to be the one someday to preside at their funeral. It's sitting with people who are hurting and grieving. It's trying to have the right words when there are no right words. And yet, it's also the most sacred blessing, an incredible privilege to pray with a family as their loved one goes from one reality to a new one. To preside at a funeral and proclaim a reality that those to whom I speak cannot grasp or find tangible. Just as Mary Magdalene was lost in her distress and grief and cannot see Jesus right in front of her until Jesus spoke her name. What a privilege it is to proclaim a reality that I know and believe in hopes that they too may know that peace and hope. The peace and hope of that reality. In those moments, guess what? Resurrection matters. It matters. But you know, this isn't only about our reality at those trying times in our lives. No, this is about our everyday reality. And the scriptures we heard this morning, with her reality forever changed by the resurrection, Mary Magdalene immediately went to share the news. I have seen the Lord. And do you know 
that each of those disciples, once they discovered this news to be true, they lived differently than they ever had before. A group of nobodies literally became world changers because the resurrection changed their reality forever. This is how Jesus' resurrection changes my reality. In the church, we hear words like grace, joy, hope, love, peace. Do you know that for me, those aren't just abstract words that I throw around? Do you know that? Do you know that I get to live with those things literally bursting from within me? To why I'm so excited to be here today. I know a joy that is real. I know peace. I know love, and not just conditional love, but unconditional, undeserved, forever love. I know that love. And do you know what else Jesus' death and resurrection means for me? It means I'm free. I am free. I'm free from fear. I'm free from shame. I'm free from the oppression of unforgiven sin. Jesus' death and resurrection mean that my reality, my reality, is marked by undeserved gifts. Undeserved gifts. Now, that doesn't mean that my reality is perfect. In fact, I'm certainly not, and my reality is far from it. In my reality, I have the same trials and tribulations as anyone else. But my reality, my reality in which I know the resurrection, my reality is full of undeserved gifts. So what is your reality? I want to ask you for a moment this morning to put yourself in the place of Mary Magdalene. The beginning of Easter morning, as she awakes in that hopelessness that she awoke to. Her reality that morning was a reality marked by doubt, by pain, and hopelessness. Maybe Jesus, she says to herself, maybe Jesus really isn't who I thought and hoped he was. Maybe you can relate to that. And then, in the midst of that hopelessness, Jesus says her name. He says, your name. Can it be? Is death not final? Has Jesus conquered all those things that hold us down and tear us away from God? Can it be? How does Jesus' death and resurrection change your reality? My hope for you today is that you may know and live in the love and grace and mercy of our God. And may your life be filled with hope and peace and freedom. Those are the gifts that God gives to you as you receive and celebrate the good news of the resurrection. My friends, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Gracious God, you know our realities. And you know how our perceptions, right or wrong, shape our reality. We ask you to break through our reality and reveal to us who you are. We ask you to change our reality so that we may celebrate the good news of all that you have done for us. We thank you for going to the cross. We thank you for dying for us. And we thank you for the good news 
that death has been forever conquered, that our lives can be shaped and marked by the good news of all that you give to us. We ask you that you are with us as we leave this place today, that we might be resurrection people, people of joy and hope and peace and good news. Thank you for all you've done. May you always be a part of our reality. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.